Hey everybody, uh, today I want to introduce you to a framework called Nest.js. Uh, Nest.js is a framework we can use for building backends for our Ionic applications. Uh, it's not specific to Ionic, it's just used for creating servers in general, but uh, obviously this channel and my blog focuses a lot on Ionic, so that's what we will be looking at. And so Nest.js is built on top of Node and Express, uh, which is probably the most popular way to build servers with JavaScript. And I guess building backends with JavaScript is a, a relatively new thing. I mean, it's been around for a while now, uh, but JavaScript is typically a client side language that we use to build the front end, uh, but we can now also make use of that on the back end. And so we can use JavaScript just about everywhere. And so Node and Express are very, uh, very popular tools, uh, but Nest.js is built on top of that to provide a more Angular style experience. And so when you start a new Nest.js application, you will be dropped in an, an environment that looks very much like a, a normal front end Angular application uh, with a few differences. And what you end up building uh, will create your backend. Uh, you'll create a server, you can connect it to databases and do all the normal stuff that you do uh, with a backend for your application. So in this video, we're just gonna focus on getting a basic project up and running. We're gonna run through using the Nest.js CLI, starting a project, uh, getting a basic uh, server set up, and then communicating with that through an Ionic application. I'll likely be doing more of these videos on Nest.js in the future, uh, but I do already have uh, content on the blog that you can check out. So uh, if you do wanna take a look at some more content right now, I'll link to some of those posts. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I hope you enjoy the video and let's uh, let's get into it. Okay, so I've got the Nest.js documentation up here, which is of course a good starting place for anyone. I'd recommend coming through here and just taking a look at uh, just the setup steps and the basic concepts behind the framework. Uh, as I mentioned, it is very similar to Angular. It's very Angular inspired. So uh, if you are already familiar with Angular, you'll probably already know uh, a lot of the concepts. Uh, Nest.js uses things like uh, decorators on classes, uh, there's injectable services. Um, so a lot of the the general methodology should feel pretty familiar if you're already comfortable with Angular. So what we're going to do now is just uh, get a new application up and running and we're gonna start to go through it. So if you do not already have the Nest.js CLI installed, you'll need to do that. And so you can do that just by running npm install dash g at nest forward slash CLI and that will install the CLI for you. Once you have the CLI installed, you can start a new project with the new command. So just type nest new, and then you just need to supply the project name you want to use. Uh, so we'll just call this example server. So just answer uh, any of the questions that come up in the prompt. I'm just going to use the default values for now. Uh, we're going to use NPM. Uh, you can use yarn if you would prefer. Okay, so that command's finished running now. Uh, if you look up here, you'll see that a bunch of files and folders have been created, and a lot of these might already look familiar. You can see we've got an app module file, app controller, service file. So we're going to jump into the project and take a look at those in just a second. Uh, but let's follow the prompts here. We're going to the project, and if we run, run npm run start, that is going to start our server. So now if we go into our browser and go to localhost over port 3000, you can see we get a hello world output here, which is the which is the default for the starter application. So let's also pop up the uh, debugging window here, just for use later. Okay, so now let's open this project in our code editor. Okay, so I've got the project open now and I've opened the uh, root module file Again, if you're familiar with Angular, this should be pretty familiar to you. Uh, instead of using ng module, we've just got a generic module from the Nest.js library here, but you can see it's a pretty similar concept. We have some imports at the top here. We're setting up a module. Uh, we can import any uh, other modules we want into here. Uh, we have providers being set up. Uh, a different concept here is controllers. Uh, but again, this is all very similar in spirit. And so the basic idea with Nest.js is that your controllers are going to be handling the routes that are hit uh, on your server. So we have app.controller.ts handling the root route at the moment, uh, which is what is returning that hello world string to us. As you can see here, it's making a call to app service, which is being 
injected through the constructor there, just like you would in a normal Angular application. And if we take a look at that service, you can see all this method does is return hello world. And we can also set up uh, additional controllers in the application as well. And that's going to set up additional routes that we can handle. Uh, maybe we want to set up a users route or a posts route to return uh, posts or users. Uh, but before we do that, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this value into our Ionic application, because that's generally the whole, the whole point. Our server outputs something, and obviously right now we're just running it through a browser, uh, but in a production environment, this is gonna be hosted on the internet somewhere, and we could uh, hit this uh, URL remotely. And we'd want our Ionic application to be able to make a call to this uh, server, and then pull in this value into the Ionic application. So what I'm going to do now is open up a little playground Ionic application I have, and we're gonna try and get that value in there. Okay, so I've opened up my playground uh, application. Uh, notice that I'm opening this in a separate terminal window uh, because we're going to have to have both of these being served at once. So our server is going to be served over port 3000, and then our Ionic application is going to be served over 8000. Uh, so we do need to run both of these at the same time for them to work. So I can serve the Ionic application with the usual Ionic serve. And if you don't use Ionic, you're just using uh, Nest.js for whatever reason. Uh, don't worry too much about this. All I'm gonna be doing here is just running an HTTP, uh, HTTP request to pull this data into an Ionic application. Uh, it doesn't really matter what uh, you're using on the front end. Okay, so I've got some leftover code in here from a previous uh, video I did, but I just ignore all this stuff for now. So what we're going to do is just bring up our Ionic application here. And I might do this probably just in the home page. I'm gonna get rid of all these console log statements from the other uh, the other tutorial. And I'll just trigger this in the after view init uh, method here. And as I usually mentioned, we probably wouldn't be running HTTP, or HTTP requests from uh, our page files in an Ionic application like this, but uh, this is just an example to uh, to pull in the data from Nest.js. So for now, we're just gonna do it in here. And in order to be able to make an HTTP, HTTP request, that is surprisingly hard to say, uh, we, need, we need to set up the HTTP uh, client and client module first. And again, this is a Ionic Angular specific thing. So if you're not using Ionic, then you'll just have to do whatever it is you do in your uh, front end that you're using. So we'll import the HTTP client module from Angular common HTTP, I think that's right. We need to add that to the imports. And then we will inject that into our homepage, or rather we inject that HTTP client into the homepage. Again, from Angular common HTTP. And I'm not doing this in Visual Studio Code at the moment, so hopefully I'm not doing anything incorrectly. Before I get too far into it, I'll just, I'll just log that out make sure we are getting something. Okay, cool, we've got the HTTP client injected now. So now we can make an HTTP request to our server. If you're not familiar with making HTTP requests, I will try to link to some additional uh, tutorials for that. Uh, but we can make a get request to our server by running this.http.get, and then we supply the URL that we are trying to get, or make the get request to. Uh, so in this case, it is going to be our server URL, which is localhost 3000. And then we want to subscribe to the result from that. And then we're just going to log that out. And hopefully we should get a response here in the Ionic app. Actually, we're getting the a cause error. And again, I'll link to uh, some another tutorial explaining cause, uh, but basically what cause does is prevent uh, requests across different domains. So technically here we're on a different domain going from one port to another. Uh, so we need to enable cause in, for, uh, for that to work. So we'll just quickly look up in the docs how to enable that uh, in SJS because I've forgotten. Okay, so to enable cause, all we need to do is jump into our main.ts file here and then call app dot uh, enable cause. And that should do it for us. So let's jump back in to here again. We'll refresh our Ionic application. And again, we're getting the error because I forgot to restart that uh, server. So I'll just close that down, run npm run start again. 
And now let's try it for the third time. We'll try to refresh that. And you can see right now we are actually getting a response from the server uh, there. It's expecting JSON, so this isn't working. Uh, but you can see it says uh, syntax error, unexpected token H in JSON at position zero. And of course, if we look at the response, we're actually trying to pull in, it's hello world. So the first letter we're getting there is H, which isn't valid JSON, uh, but we are pulling that response in. So instead of returning that hello world string, let's just change that to return an object instead. And that's going to provide us with the JSON response we need. So we'll jump into uh, the service that is actually returning uh, that string. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to, we'll just create a little response object here and we'll give that one property of message and that's going to contain our hello world uh, string there. And so we'll just need to return that response instead. Uh, we'll need to change the type here because it's expecting it to return uh, a string. Uh, we'll just change that to object. So now if we save this and restart that server again, We'll jump back into uh, the application again. And if we refresh that, we can see here we get an object with a message of hello world. So now that we're getting a, a JSON, uh, we're getting JSON data sent to our Ionic application, uh, the Angular HTTP client is getting that, passing it and giving us this wonderful object that we can work with. So we're making a get request to this URL. And so that is activating uh, this method in the controller. And I should change this as well, actually, because that is still expecting that string. So I just change that. Uh, so it's activating this controller and it's triggering this get method here. Uh, we put the get decorator on this function. So that's what gets triggered when we make a get request. Uh, you can also make a post request as well. Uh, but before I finish this video, we will go through one more quick example. Uh, of uh, making a request to one of the, a different controller. Uh, we'll make a request to a URL that's not the, the root URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop serving that and we're going to create a new controller. So we'll run nest g controller and then we just name that whatever we want. I'll call this one uh, posts. So now you can see this new folder has been created here. We have, uh, we can open up that to see our post controller. And if we take a look in the app module file, you can see that the post controller has also uh, been automatically imported and added to our controllers. So let's jump in here and we'll quickly add a, a get. Uh, we're going to add a get method in here. So we're gonna to have to import get from nest.js common. Uh, again, just quickly, we're not actually going to create a post here, uh, but you can also import post and set that up. So we'll add the get decorator and then you can call the method whatever you want. It doesn't need to be called anything specific. So I'm just going to call this um, get posts. And then we can just have this return uh, whatever we want. Uh, I'd probably uh, in a real world situation, again, have a, like a, another service set up like a post service where I would get those posts. We'd probably pull them in from a database or something like that. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to return uh, just a dummy object. So. What I'm going to do is say let posts equal, uh, let's create an array of objects here. And we'll just give a title to each post. And uh, we'll just call them all my post. I'm just going to copy and paste this a bunch of times just to give us some more data to work with. And then we will make sure to return that uh, post uh, array. So what I should be able to do now is if we jump uh, back into our playground application, instead of hitting the root URL here, if we hit forward slash posts, and since we're making a get request to that URL, we could also make a post request to trigger a different method, but we're making a get request to post, so that should trigger this controller. It's gonna hit this method here, which is our, our default get method. You can also actually supply uh, additional parameters to the get method to create different uh, routes on the post controller. Uh, but we're just going to make a request to that uh, default route there. So let's just open up the browser and see what's going on. Of course, we'll need to actually serve that uh, controller. I'm not serve the controller, we're gonna serve, um, uh, serve the server. And once again, we will refresh our Ionic application and cross our fingers and cool. So we have that array being pulled in now. So we made a request to 
forward slash posts, which we can just do in our browser as well to see the result. And that is returning all of the posts from our server. And so obviously there's a lot more you can do. As I mentioned, you can set up uh, additional routes on that post controller. Say if we wanted to uh, have uh, a route that would accept an ID value. So I could go to post forward slash 12 and then do something with that. Obviously we'd use that to then grab a specific post and return that to the user. And so of course, Nest.js is a fully fledged framework. You can do a lot more stuff with it. As I keep hitting on, it is Angular inspired. And so everything, or rather most things, I guess that you'd expect to be able to do with Angular, you can do in Nest.js, which just creates a really nice environment to work with uh, for people who are familiar with Angular. Uh, it's really nice to be able to start up with a new technology and already sort of feel at home with it a little bit. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little introduction video. If you did like this, or if you do want to see more Nest.js videos in the future, please uh, do leave a comment because I'm not really sure how much interest there is out there for Nest.js specifically, uh, although I do really like it a lot. And yeah, otherwise, please do feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.